Hebrews chapter 12. We are still in the mystery of the firstborn. Don't be tired, family. Don't be tired because we'll be traveling this path for a time to come. But you have come to Mount Zion. You've come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. You've come to the heavenly Jerusalem to, mm, to an innumerable company of angels. You've come to the general assembly and church. This general assembly is church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. What's a beauty? Registered in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. You've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And you have come to the blood of the sprinkling. And that speaks better things than that of Abel. Let's narrow down to verse 23. To the general assembly. So you have come to the general assembly. And you have come to the church of the firstborn. And you have come to the assembly, the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. I want to trust God today that you are among those who are registered in heaven. Without that, everything is vanity. It is useless to be alive if at the end of it, it is just that you existed, you walked the earth, you married, you had children, you ate, you drank. Other mammals do that, but there is no assurance beyond the earth. So if everything is about the issue of, of if just procuring and procreating, procuring and procreating, that you can acquire something new, that you can get something, some toy, some property, that oh, you've eaten, oh, you married, if that's the, all the excitement. Oh, you have beautiful children. Oh, you travel places. Oh, you have amazing certificates. Oh, and that, and that, and that. If that is the end of your story, other mammals share similar fates. And God didn't say they are his image and likeness. So the, the secret of all of this the crypto dimension of all of this, <laughs> the hidden aspect of all of this that needs revelation as a result of which I come to work every time I stand here with intentionality that is intentional is that beyond all of this, on top of all of this, above all of this, that you are registered in heaven. Registered in heaven doesn't mean, oh, that you go to heaven tomorrow. I am not in a hurry to go to heaven. I am in a hurry to tell you to get registered in heaven that whenever it comes, you get there because certainly it will come one day. But what happens when you are here on earth? What you do while you are here on earth with your registration number in heaven? You see, the whole madness about people relocating to the United States of America, to Canada, you know, Canada now, I just read something that Canadian government is coming, is coming immigrants now. So there are things put in place, you know, to, uh, to play deals and to play games and all of that because of the influx of people. The campaign, Trump is building his whole campaign around immigration, <laughs> around immigration, telling people of, of other nations, you are not welcome to America. And saying people just come here to give birth in order to give them not a citizenship. We're going to cancel that. So issue of traveling while you are pregnant in order to have a child who will eventually become an American. Trump is using that as a, as a, serious, a serious election or campaign issue. So if he becomes the president of the United States of America, he's going to sound it very loud. You are not welcome. And I actually like it. I actually like his policy, even though I don't wish that he's the, president, the next president of the United States of America. But I like his stand on immigration in a sense, not generally. Because we have to build our neighborhood. I really believe that our president should, if, I, if in any way I will wish that Trump will become president so that he can take time out and disgrace some of our presidents and some of our governors and take them out and really insult them and 
and will not owe them apology. I think our people just need to wake up. Our people just need to wake up. But I think God wants a generation of people who, whether they go out of the country, relocate or whatever, but they will have an eye on developing this hood, this neighborhood called Nigeria. We are desperately in need of light in this place. And so I really believe that is a great opportunity for believers, for those who know the Christ, those who are the firstborn of God, who have understanding, proper understanding of the mystery of belonging to God, the mystery of being begotten in God. I believe it's such a great opportunity that everyone can make a difference in their little corner one day at a time. And eventually, when you connect the dots, the lights will, on, will be on, will be turned on one day or sometime in the future. So when I give this teaching that you are registered in heaven, what do you do with your registration number? I, that's what took me to the United States of America, the issue of number, people's number. That's everything. People's number. That's everything for welfare, for security for accountability that's everything so people carrying the u.s passport means they can travel to almost every nation on earth and nobody will will ask them for visa but what do you do with the passport of heaven what do you do with the registration number of heaven for those who are already registered and what do you intend to do with it when you are registered those are the things that as a person i'm interested in as i preach as i teach those are the things. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you are both registered in heaven and you take advantage, that you take advantage of your registration. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've been talking about that the firstborn experience is grace, not age. Tell somebody it is grace and not age. Come on, I didn't hear you. Tell another person it is grace, not age. Grace. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15, 16, 17, and 18. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15, 16, 17, and 18. He is the image of the invisible God. Glory to God. The firstborn over all creation. I love the word over. Where there is firstborn, where there is firstborn, the preposition will be, he is over. Where there is firstborn, you cannot enjoy firstborn grace and be under. When I mean under, I'm not talking about under in service. I'm not talking about under in obedience. I'm talking about under in excelling, in excellence. I'm talking about under in performance. I'm talking about under in impact. You cannot be under in impact. If you are under in impact and you carry the firstborn, you are not taught. And you carry the firstborn status. And you are registered in heaven. And you carry the DNA, the spiritual DNA, the character of the firstborn. And I told you last week, it should be last week, that I said the seal of the firstborn is the Holy Ghost. That the DNA proof of the firstborn is the Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Ghost as speaking in tongues. Because you can speak in tongues and you have no experience of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues can come from any spirit. Can come from, if you are drunk, you can speak in tongues. Very effortlessly and nobody knows what you are talking about. Just try, no, don't be drunk to try it. Don't be. And people teach in some churches, people are teaching people how to speak in tongues. So in those days when we talk about school of the Holy Spirit, people say, ah, school of the Holy Spirit, I will not come because why should I come and sit down? Somebody else will teach me how to speak in tongues. In the mind of many people, Holy Ghost is about tongues. So it's a tongue talking, that's all. Spirit feel, tongue talking, that's all. It's so poor. If the Holy Ghost is reduced to just tongue talking, and being filled, nonsense, absolute nonsense. Just guy said, I will ask the Father, and he will send you Alos Paracletos. I have taken time 
over and over to explain this to you, the weight of it, I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate, another helper. The secret is in another. Two words in, in Greek speaking of another. There is heteros, another of a different kind, another of a different value, another of a different character, of a different quality, of a different capacity. That is heteros. But there is alos. Alos is another of the same quality, another of the same character, another of the same potency, the same ability, the same capacity, and the same sufficiency. Jesus did not say, I will ask the Father, and he will send you heteros paracletos. He said, and he will send you alos paracletos. Alos, in the sense of, he will send you advocates like myself. He will send you helper like myself. He will send you the one who will be with you the same way I am with you. These words were known very particularly and personally to the people who heard them. Because Peter and the rest knew the impact that Jesus had in their midst. The very fact that Jesus was with them when there was storm, there was a solution before the storm. Just because he was there with them. That is why they didn't worry to talk to the storm. They did not think about it. They wouldn't talk to the storm. They talked to the one who had power over the storm. And so when they were traveling along the lake, suddenly a storm. Suddenly, and the threat, the danger of everyone dying. And they walked to Jesus as he was sleeping. He said, carest thou not that we perish don't you care and he rose up he did not quarrel with them he spoke <laughs> and he camped everywhere so when he said i will ask the father and the father will give you a loss paracletos he will give you the helper like me that in the storm there is an assurance that prosperity still enjoy stability it doesn't mean there will be no storm that's not the implication it doesn't mean there will be no chaos once in a while the storm will break out when you least expect it the wind will be will be adverse and against you when you least expect it but the point is this he is with you so when he says i will ask the father and the father will send you a helper like myself so what do you do with the helper equal to Jesus that's the point that's the point of the firstborn and I'm sure you are listening to me listening to me like I'm speaking speaking what is it Chinese Chinese is no longer it's no longer foreign now it's everywhere what is it that is foreign that is strange that you are listening to this morning the point is that God did not make believers. God did not have plan. The budget of God, the economy of God is not designed to have believers play under in impact. To be insignificant in impact. That's why the preaching of the, the Pentecostal movement and those who brought it, they just made it look like once you are born again, it's a condemnation. Until today, many people have not recovered from it. Many people have not recovered from it. And it didn't start with them. It started with the mainline churches. The Catholic church in history, it reached a point that, oh, if you are close to God, you must be a reverend sister. You must be a monk. Even till today, many young Catholics who are very pious and very close to God, they think, if you are a girl, you must go to the convents. If you are a boy, you must become a priest. That's utter madness. Is still a contamination of the mind because of lack of teaching. Being a, withdrawing into the convent means you restrict your impact to a sphere. Withdrawing to become a monk means you are hemmed in and fenced out to restrict your impact to a sphere that you cannot play at a ledger field. But Christ came to unleash a generation. You know the Holy Ghost is not sent for comfortable living.